So today I'm finally getting around to getting a second irrigation system set up here on this raised garden bed. I've had one going to this one all summer. I actually just kind of improvised. It was set up in my uh, tubs last year, so it didn't really fit this garden bed perfectly, but I managed to move things around, change some of the fittings. That's the beauty of using irrigation systems. There is usually some way you can always kind of MacGyver things to make them work in your space. So I've got this all set up here with some drips. I got some bubblers going and everything seems to be getting well watered here in this space. So today I have run a T here over to this other garden bed. It's nice to have these on off valves right at each location so you can control whether you want to water something or not. So today we're going to fit it up with some more pieces and create a drip line system running through this whole garden bed. So I think I got everything I need here to get going. I got a little garden kneeler stool to sit on. I got all my parts and pieces. I got some hot water to help make the uh, fittings go together a little bit faster. So let's get started. So I figured out that this was a little bit too high and to join this to the elbow, you're gonna have to have another piece of half inch tubing in between the two. So I'm gonna create that first and then we will decide where it needs to sit on here and then we can cut this accordingly. So I think that's the best way to approach this. So we're gonna start off by heating up the half inch tubing and attach it to our two fixtures here. So heating it up usually makes it a lot faster and easier. If it's a hot sunny day, you can have your half inch tubing sitting out in the sun not like that today so we are using the hot water you can see it'll just slide on super fast super easy so we got that piece now we're gonna attach the elbow at the other end again you can see it's gonna slide on easy get a good grip push and twist and you should be able to get that on really good just put a little more heat on it push that on so now you got those on there really good so now we're ready to kind of size it up here. I want it to kind of sit on my container like this so I can run my half inch tubing all across the back and then set up my, my drip emitters from there. So I think I'll just kind of eyeball it here. Give myself a little bit of extra and cut right there. Just get this heated up in my hot water here. All right, take this piece. Slides right on, and there we go. So now, kind of got it set up the way I want. Should sit here nicely. Take one of my garden stakes just to secure it in place. That way now I have an on off switch here so I can control whether I want to water this bed or not and we're ready to set up the drip system. Okay, so now we have attached it and we're ready to run our half inch tubing along the end here of our bed. 
course, all of this is easier to do in the beginning of the season before you have anything planted, but still should be able to work around all my plants here. So I'm going to give myself a little extra here and just cut it off. And then I have one of these just end cap closures here that work to just pinch it off. Just slide it on there. Pinch your line. This. And just do that. And so now you have that end pinched off. Just got to figure out a way to secure this with maybe some more garden stakes. And then we are ready to tap into this and set up our drip line. Okay, so now that I have my half inch tubing in place here, I'm now gonna be starting to work with some quarter inch drip line. So this is something uh, that's a Rainbird product. It has little drip emitters every six inches. I think it'll work good in this garden bed here. Now, normally, if you were really wanting to, you know, make it pretty, I would, do separate lines you know every six inches like I was thinking or four inches or whatever all along cut them to length for the length of the bed but because I got everything kind of planted right now and I don't want to kind of set it up that way in case I do something different next spring what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up one starting point here and I will be just using one of these quarter inch barbs which I will put into my half inch tubing here, get this secured into the other end. And then I'm just gonna kind of weave it through my bed here and just kind of so I can direct it to all the plants as they are planted right now. Just use some garden stakes to secure it. If this was the beginning of the year and I had an empty garden bed, I would maybe do the uh, separate lines and then plant my plants in here accordingly lining them up with the emitters and doing it all correctly so we're kind of doing it a little bit wonky this year but this will be a good way to to get the watering system set up now and kind of get to all those plants so this is a must-have tool it comes in the rainbird kit that um, i'll show the link down below but this is a great little tool that comes with the rainbird repair kit something that I purchased right off the bat that has a lot of the parts that you need so you can just work your way into the half inch tubing wiggle your way in sorry about my cucumbers are getting in the way get that barb in and then just release then you are ready to attach your quarter inch tubing Everything should be well sealed now. So there we are. So now I'm going to just start working my way around through my garden bed. I'm not going to try and film it as I do it because it's, it's a little complicated. And I will show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, so I have all of my drip emitter line set up and kind of staked into place. So I'm going to just try to give you a a good visual of what I did here. So as we've seen, we've got the starting point here where I put in the barb and connected the drip emitter line right there. And then I just started to string it along. So I just tried to make sure the emitters are close to one of the plants. Again, I can adjust it further with more stakes, but I just got it running through over to my tomatoes here. This is a great system for tomatoes. They really don't like getting their leaves wet and the best way to water them is directly, you know, at the stem into the soil. So this drip system is going to work really well for that. Then I just got it running back and forth, hitting some more of the cucumbers there at the end, running back through. I got lettuces, radishes coming in the middle. Then I got a few pepper plants here, so I've hit them with a drip emitter. Then I got some carrots, so I just ran it down the middle and then ended it over here. 
So I didn't want to cut it off yet because I just want to test it out. So I just took a zip tie and pinched off the end. As you can see, I still have a lot of the hose left here. So the next thing to do is test it out and see if it's going to be properly watering your space. So I just wanted to kind of give you a rundown of what my irrigation system has grown into so far and what I'm all watering. So, so I have mine all set up with a timer, filter, reducer, and then running into the half inch tubing. So if you are looking to set up an irrigation system, I totally recommend this system. I have some other videos on how to get that all set up. And I will leave some links to those in the description box below. So I just wanted to show you how, to, how my system goes here. So I have it running, first of all, to my potato patch. This is my potatoes under straw. And I've just created a T here. And then I have my valve. And I'm using drip emitters also in my potato patch. This is a bigger half inch tubing that is uh, emitters every 12 inches. So it's a little bit bigger for, you know, kind of for ground ground growing, I would say. And I've done the same thing where I've just weaved it all through my whole potato patch. So each potato has an emitter near it and it's been getting lots of water. And so sometimes when I'm running my system, I shut this valve off because the potatoes being under straw don't really need as much watering. So that's been working well. So then my half inch tubing with the T going here runs on over now to my containers. So I used to have a whole bunch of these here last year. You may have seen in some of my videos set up on drip. I got it still kind of running here and also have an on off valve so I can shut this whole system off if I don't want to. And then there's a T at the bottom so that this system over here can run. So it's really good if you can set it up in zones that you can turn on and off and kind of control where and when you want to water everything. So these drip emitters I'm using in my containers I believe are eight inches uh, apart. So it's a little bit further apart than what we just used today, the six inch. Six inch would probably work better in my containers now that I see um, just for getting thorough watering. But as you can see, my carrots are going crazy. I had lettuces in here. I just pulled out all the lettuce and now I got some peas started in there. And then that zone ended here. So I just put one of those end caps on the end to stop the water. Now I'm just looking at all these containers down this aisle here thinking I could probably set up another zone and put these all on drip as well. If you're wondering why I have all these containers sitting up on tubs, I've had problems with a gopher getting to my zucchinis. My peas have been wiped out twice. <laughs> so now I've got them planted for a third time in these tubs or these grow bags. And I'm gonna try and get them better protected. But so far, these having them raised up on these tubs here has deterred him from coming back and eating up my zucchinis. You can see I have another nice one coming here. I think this one I'm gonna harvest it maybe today, yeet it. So that little system seems to be working. So then from there again, another T takes me over to my two uh, grow beds here. I got another T down there and a valve to control this system. And now we have this system set up also with a valve to control it. So let's get that water turned on. So the beauty of these timers, of course, is you can set the watering time for when you're going on vacation or if you want it to water, you know, late in the evening or early in the morning, you can set the timer and it'll just turn off on and off and water your garden. I'm just going to use the manual feature right now and I have it set at 15 minutes. So that's kind of the standard I usually follow 15 minutes every day. I've seen other recommendations that 25 minutes every two days is good. So let's go check out and see how the water system is working in my new bed. So over here, we seem to have something that has blue its top. <laughs> As you can see, I have different 
bubblers in here and sometimes the top just blows off from the pressure. So I got that all fixed now and that is watering good. So this system is going well. So this wasn't turned on, it was in the off position, so we're just going to turn it on. No water spraying anywhere. A little bit of dribbling here at the end. This is maybe not working as good, but seems to be okay. So it's going to take a while to determine if this is watering thoroughly and in the correct places. The best way to test it out, like I'm doing right now, is just let it run for the full 15 minutes or 25 minutes. And then just check the moisture level in your bed to see that everything is getting properly watered. Something to keep in mind too is the water spreads underneath the soil. So it may look wet on the top, just in a smaller area, but underneath it might be spreading a little further. So it's always good to just stick your finger into your soil check the moisture you know about an inch down and see what it looks like we're actually in a bit of a cool spell today and I think there's rain coming so don't really need to be watering too much today but I think this is going to work out really well so if you have an irrigation system going in your garden I'd love to hear about it in the comments or if you're thinking about setting up irrigation and feeling a little intimidated because there is a lot of parts and pieces to it I do have a few videos on my channel you can check out on how to set up different systems, different zones in your garden. I've started this I think last year at the beginning of the year and I just keep expanding and learning. You build up a little supply of all the little parts and pieces that you need and you pretty much can do anything, fix your mistakes and uh, it's a great way to properly water your garden give you some free time to do other things, go on vacation, and just really enjoy your garden. So as always, please hit that like button and help the channel out. Leave me comments and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos coming to the channel. Thanks for watching.